All right. Thanks everyone for joining in uh, in the Graduate College of Engineering with the Graduate Student Communi Community. Today we have, uh, today in the seminar series, we have Rajit uh, Keda Sri Sethi. And uh, before uh, I hand the stage over to Rajit, uh, let me give a quick introduction to a uh, graduate student community. So this is the graduate student community leadership team for the academic year of 2023 to 24. Um, we have two coaches, which is Roshan and Rachel. Then we have our publicity team in which it consists of Andrew and Avinash who uh, has publicity in their thing. They mail everything regarding the uh, what are the next people who are going to come on the panel. Then we have youth support team. Uh, consisting of Anirban, Swapnil, Mayank, myself, Latif, Pilani, Nuran, Suraj, uh, Saivash, and Louis. And uh, we have a mentor, Professor Farooq Misri, who mentors us regarding everything in the GSE leadership team. Uh, we do hold uh, every Wednesday uh, regular meetings at 5.15 p.m., and if anyone wants to join and connect with us, they can email or text Rachel and Roshan on the on the, the email ID which have been mentioned. And if you have any issue with the timing, we can schedule it according to the student's uh, perspective. Then uh, we have a uh, we have a link as well as QR for our engage page. If anyone here is not a member on an engage place engage page please scan this qr and support us there as well and a link is also provided in the chat as well then uh, we are also on the linkedin page as well where we will uh, we are trying to post the next seminar series like the updates of everything what gsc is doing this is the qr code for that okay. you must find the page if not GSC is also available on Facebook, okay. where we post regular updates as well. This is a QR code for Facebook, if anyone wants to scan it. And finally, we are also on YouTube, uh, where we post all the recorded session on the YouTube. So if anyone uh, misses something or if anyone has to leave early, they can watch the YouTube video once we are done with this. With that being said, we have Dave and Suzette Burnt team room where uh, you can have a uh, chill time and we have couches, whiteboard, coffee pot, microwave. You can use it freely. If anyone wants access to this room, please email to Roshan or Rachel and we can let, let you the access of this room. Just a reminder that uh, we have a link to Google form. If any, if anyone missed uh, signing the sheet, uh, please do that uh, with that link. Okay. Yeah. With that being said, today yeah. we have Rajit uh, Keda Sri Sethi, who mm -hmm. would be speaking on Oklahoma housing needs assessment and sustainability, sustainable LID mm -hmm. methods. Uh, a quick uh, introduction of Rajit. Uh, he's a third year graduate student pursuing dual master's degree in landscape architecture and regional planning and planning cities. He has also done internship with Oklahoma City and some other companies as well. So I hereby now invite Rajit to take, take over and proceed with his presentation. Uh, thank you, Moin, uh, for the introduction and uh, giving you details about uh, GSC and everything. It is really uh, interesting and nice to see uh, uh, student clubs uh, doing uh, things together. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, I can quickly share my screen and um, start with my presentation. Just uh, give me a second. Sure. 
data. I'll share my under screen. So, um, can you all, uh, are, are you all able to see my screen? Uh, yep. My mouse cursor. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so uh, today, uh, yeah, I'm I'm going to present about uh, Oklahoma Housing Needs Assessment Project and also sustainable uh, LID methods. LID is short from uh, uh, low impact development methods. So today's agenda is like I'll I'll go to give my uh, personal introduction and also I'm going to talk about like two different topics. One is a uh, housing project housing needs assessment project. And also the second one is uh, uh, sustainable uh, low impact development methods. So we'll be having uh, two sessions of a QA. and a So uh, after my uh, first topic, uh, feel free to um, ask questions. Yes, uh, coming to a uh, personal introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Rajit Kumar Kedar City. So um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, yeah, I can say that I'm an architect. I'm currently pursuing my uh, landscape architecture and also regional and city planning degrees. So uh, I'll give you like a brief introduction. So uh, I, I did my bachelor's uh, in uh, architecture uh, back at Andhra University. Uh, it's kind of a, a public university uh, in the state of Andhra Pradesh uh, in the South India. So where I did my bachelor's, uh, after my bachelor's, uh, I did work as a licensed architect for like two years. And after that, uh, I realized that uh, most of the outdoor spaces are like not paid much attention as the buildings and only buildings alone. So outdoor spaces can uh, uh, like uh, create a very big impact on uh, people and like especially in the cities and everything. So I wanted to learn more about the outdoor spaces and I uh, started my master's degree in landscape architecture uh, at uh, OU, uh, Gibbs College of Architecture. Uh, in the process, I did my first uh, summer internship uh, in a firm called Kaiser Wo Green Design that is uh, in Tennessee, uh, in Franklin. So uh, during my internship, uh, the, they were like working on a uh, large scale community projects, uh, community development and everything. So I got interested into planning. So I reached out to my professors and uh, uh, they suggested me to uh, the planning uh, degree. So I'm currently pursuing my uh, dual degree in landscape and also regional and city planning. So I'm taking um, way too many courses uh, to complete uh, my degree um, in uh, three years of time. So I'll be graduating in the next year, spring semester, um, May uh, of 2024. So I'll be graduating um, after three years in May. Um, yes, um, and also currently I'm uh, doing my uh, uh, Re graduate research assistant at uh, IQC uh, OU. IQC is like Institute for like Quality Communities. That is like a uh, professional office uh, that is set up with the Gibbs College of Architecture, where students work on uh, many uh, planning and uh, community and landscape projects in real time. So uh, it, it is like very interesting. Uh, in the IQC, I got uh, introduced into Oklahoma Housing uh, Needs Assessment Project. Uh, that is uh, uh, that is where uh, Sean Schaefer, he's the principal investigator uh, of the project. So it is very nice working with him on all the projects and everything. Uh, I'm going to uh, give you the details uh, in my in my later presentation. Uh, coming to uh, intern planner. So I'm currently uh, working at uh, planning intern uh, at the city of Oklahoma City. Uh, uh, city of Oklahoma City um, uh, as an uh, intern planner. Uh, there I'm working on a strong neighborhoods initiative and also transportation planning, uh, which means like uh, SNI. SNI is strong neighborhoods initiative where uh, we take uh, a neighborhood uh, into consideration. Uh, there is a lot of process in shortlisting a neighborhood, but after shortlisting a neighborhood, uh, which is like a declining in the development, we try to use uh, many strategies in terms of housing, uh, aesthetics, and also local business support and uh, LONs and incentives and everything uh, into like a particular uh, neighborhood. Uh, 
trying to revitalize and bring back uh, into development using many strategies. Uh, that is the work I'm doing uh, at uh, City of Oklahoma City. And I'm also uh, a co-president for uh, SCASLA club at OU. SCASLA is a student chapter of American Society of Landscape Architects uh, at OU. Uh, that is like basically a student club for landscape architects. Uh, so we'll be doing many uh, networking events, uh, social events. Uh, uh, together, we'll be talking to some of the firms and many presentations will be going on similar to this. Um, yeah, there's a student club. And yeah, I'm also a, a graduate student senator uh, representing our club uh, at the Student Government Association. And uh, with the Design Bleep, uh, Design Bleep uh, is like uh, a website. Currently, uh, uh, I didn't find like uh, quite a time to work on it. Uh, the website is basically, uh, it provides uh, resources for like students, alternatives, uh, like uh, freebies and everything. So for example, we have like Adobe Suit, like Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator and everything. So we have like alternative free versions available in some of the websites and everything. So not uh, many students can afford all the licensing and uh, everything. So uh, I created like a, a page uh, more like a website giving all the re resources to uh, students but currently uh, it is not doing good I it needs some work and I used to like maintain this during my undergrad very well but uh, coming into the grad school uh, I'm uh, a bit uh, busy with all these pro uh, projects and work so uh, it needs uh, uh, attention and uh, I will uh, definitely update you all after uh, it is back on track. Yes, um, yeah, uh, first, uh, for those who don't know, I'm an international student from India. So um, uh, I'm here uh, about, uh, passionate about outdoor spaces. So learning my uh, many things about uh, US and Oklahoma, uh, learning more uh, uh, theoretical and uh, good things about uh, theory in uh, academic and also learning more interesting things uh, in the practical world, uh, working on uh, real-time projects at IQC and also internships and everything. So here is my uh, QR code. I'm like basically on uh, all social medias and I like to socialize with uh, people and uh, you can uh, scan the QR code and uh, I'm available on Instagram. I'm mostly active, Facebook and name the social media. I'm, I'm, I'm there everywhere. Um, yeah, you can see my likes and hobbies here. So uh, I mostly I like to sketch a lot and I like to try uh, many types of different types of food. Uh, uh, mostly I like street food. Uh, street food in back in India is like pretty good and tasty. I like to try wherever I go um, to major cities. Uh, uh, it's very good. Mm, yeah, all these things, yeah. Um, yeah, I like to travel and uh, I currently uh, miss my family. Uh, they're really nice to me and I like uh, spending uh, time with my family. Mm, yeah, that's it. I watch a lot of movies and uh, web series, TV show. Yeah, wide range, not in uh, a particular. Yeah. So, yeah, coming to uh, Oklahoma Housing Needs Assessment Project. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, what is the goal of this uh, assessment project? Um, so basically uh, the primary goal of this assessment is to like create a tool that is uh, to uh, estimate uh, the housing uh, need for housing in the affordable housing in Oklahoma. So uh, we can see uh, in uh, newspapers and like many articles, uh, uh, especially after COVID, uh, the prices of housing are like a record high and not many people uh, cannot afford uh, housing and I mean, there are like many situations with the homeless, especially in the Oklahoma downtown and everything. So uh, we are trying to uh, create a tool uh, that might help to uh, estimate uh, need for housing in uh, uh, Oklahoma state as a whole. So yeah, who, who uh, is creating uh, Oklahoma uh, housing needs assessment? So. Uh, there is a uh, Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency that is uh, an office uh, that is in uh, Oklahoma City. 
Uh, they gave a federal tax credits uh, for housing projects in Oklahoma. And uh, from University of Oklahoma, uh, Gibbs College of Architecture, uh, uh, Institute for Quality Communities, that, uh, that is where I come in. And um, there are a few other students. And also Urban Design Studio, uh, where uh, Sean is uh, director of the Urban Design Studio. That is the OU Tulsa campus uh, that is uh, in Tulsa. So a student from them, uh, from the Tulsa campus and also um, School of Computer and Electrical Engineering. Um, they, that is like um, Center for Intelligent Transportation Systems. A uh, uh, couple of students uh, from uh, Computer and Electrical Engineering Department. So we all are, are like a team and work together on this, uh, creating uh, the assessment. Uh, who will uh, use the assessment? Um, yeah. Obviously, Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency, uh, they will use uh, this assessment uh, in giving uh, the tax credits uh, for the uh, developers and everything. So uh, OFA development program applicants and uh, uh, for profit housing developers, nonprofits, uh, bankers, lenders, uh, legislators, and policymakers. Uh, policymakers, uh, it is like, uh, that is where, uh, uh, where uh, so using this assessment, they can find out where the problems are exactly between the need and demand. And basing on that, other policy makers can get an idea of uh, what needs to be uh, developed or changed in terms of policy. And local government officials, there are like many uh, cities and uh, many small cities and many people who are interested in this and real estate professionals whether they might be uh, big firms and also young professionals. Different uh, users perspective. So um, in OFA, uh, we are uh, mostly focusing on like uh, macroeconomic perspective, uh, policy to all the properties, uh, as I mentioned earlier, and um, requires rule to uh, rule or formula uh, community need uh, equitable uh, distribution. Uh, of benefits and funds. And uh, yeah, as I told earlier, it's like distribution of the funds are basing on the assessment and everything. Um, developers, uh, most developers use, uh, uh, can use this tool in order to support their application, uh, applying for uh, credits and everything. So how this uh, assessment works. Um, we are trying to uh, make it uh, easy to use web portal. Um, yeah, so here we can clearly see uh, it's like the prototype model uh, flowchart. Uh, this is kind of like technical. Uh, you can see here uh, boundary data that is like uh, we are currently working on the county level. So uh, Oklahoma has like 77 counties and uh, they have like particular boundaries and everything. So we take all this boundary data and integrate with uh, the variable data we integrate using a uh, GIS software. Uh, uh, we have like uh, freeware softwares and uh, uh, ArcGIS is a professional software. Currently, we are using uh, licensed versions of uh, ArcGIS professional softwares, and we process those maps and uh, we try to uh, generate interactive web maps and static maps. Uh, that's our end goal. Uh, we're trying to uh, make uh, the website interactive and uh, easy to use so that uh, developers and uh, OFA staff are, uh, can use it uh, uh, very freely and uh, get their assessment uh, at whichever level they want. Um, yes, where, uh, where, where will the data come from? Um, the data comes from like, uh, we're using uh, US census data. Uh, in census, we use a decennial census and also I mean, uh, American community service uh, data. And uh, uh, we use uh, HUD data, HUD is like housing uh, data. And we are using uh, BLS, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics and OK Commerce. Uh, all these data for macroeconomic data, housing data, uh, in order to uh, develop the assessment uh, assessment of, of uh, housing in Oklahoma. So yeah, uh, this is all kind of like a really technical. Uh, we use like um, uh, more than uh, 100 uh, 
approximate 120 possible variables uh, from case studies and everything. Uh, it depends on uh, availability, uh, geographic coverage, compatibility and valid, uh, validity and reliability. So uh, the challenge is that uh, we can only work on uh, the assessment with only the available data. So it is kind of like whole uh, Oklahoma state level. Uh, so some of the data is available uh, like the city level, not, not available at the city level and mostly the county level and uh, all the data available. It also has the margin of error and everything. So we should take everything into consideration um, while working on this uh, data. So what levels of geography will be available? Um, yeah. Uh, currently, we're like uh, working on uh, county level, uh, metropolitan, micropolitan level, and everything. So earlier we started with the county level, but uh, we realized that uh, most people are interested in metro and micropolitan areas. So uh, we're trying to integrate uh, that in also uh, into our assessment. So uh, when will the assessment uh, be done? Um, yes, currently uh, you can see the map. Um, we started like early January this year and currently we are in the alpha phase development. We recently uh, are working on uh, MOP as like minimally operable product. Uh, it's kind of like uh, complex and we're trying to uh, uh, improve the website and add many features and variables to make it more interactive and easy to use. So um, by the end of uh, December, uh, we'll be completing one year to the project. And our goal is to uh, come up with something uh, by uh, next year, uh, uh, similar to like alpha phase development uh, and uh, um, lo look for uh, feedback and uh, continue uh, going ahead with the project. Uh, what has uh, been accomplished so far? So yeah, we worked on like many case studies from the assessment. So many other uh, cities also uh, worked on some of these assessment, many other states. So we uh, worked on some of the case studies from other states and cities. And uh, we reviewed our OFA programs and application. That's where other tax credit uh, funds uh, and the, uh, the range comes in uh, like uh, 4%, 9%, something like that. So uh, we did the comparison of market measures and models. Uh, we did uh, selection of data and creation of data structure. Uh, we uh, set up all the data structure in order where the data is stored and how the website kind of works and everything. So yeah, we also uh, created a software developer environment. We are uh, trying to adapt uh, to work with the developers so that our developers need the data in particular way. So we are trying to uh, do the analysis and uh, uh, change the data and uh, according to, not exactly change, uh, adapt the data according to what uh, developers uh, need in a particular format. And yeah, we designed the system architecture. We did some of the stakeholder outreach and everything. So this is um, our main focus is gap analysis algorithm. So uh, our gap analysis mainly works on, uh, uh, how do I say, uh, supply versus demand. So uh, for like every place, uh, there is like, uh, a number of housing supply uh, that is currently in the city, but uh, there is also a demand that is uh, housing needed in the particular city. So some of the city have like surplus amount of um, supply. Some of them have like uh, less amount of supply in terms of housing. So that's where affordability comes in. So if it's like very less uh, availability, all the prices increase, affordability is not, uh, uh, very good in those areas and we're trying to uh, show what's happening in different types of counties and different types of um, micro and metropolitan cities. So this is the uh, gap analysis algorithm. So uh, this is kind of a sample of how our website looks. So we're trying to, uh, as I told earlier, we're trying to make uh, interactive web website, uh, um, pardon me, interactive web map. Um, so this is kind of a website. Um, it is kind of a sample uh, uh, UI interface. So uh, middle, it will be like the map interface. Uh, at the right, will be uh, showing the charts and tables of 
all the analysis and also uh, the left will be the search bar and uh, you can uh, customize your search uh, in the control panel uh, using some of the options. So this is basically a mock-up of uh, interface we are developing. Yes, um, how will the stakeholders will be involved? Um, so we have like the monthly newsletters, uh, we have like uh, user interviews and use, case, uh, use cases. And uh, during our uh, stakeholder meetings, we also got like sign up for to be beta testers uh, in order to um, uh, test our uh, alpha phase and beta phase uh, uh, develop website. Yeah, uh, here uh, our research uh, team contacts. Uh, first is mine, uh, I'm Rajit, and uh, next is the Sean, and uh, Sean is the principal inf investigator of the project, and Daryl is uh, our main point of contact uh, at the Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency. So uh, you can see at the right is a stakeholder engagement at the Oklahoma Coalition for Affordable Housing. So. Um, uh, you can contact us uh, if you have uh, anything to contribute or any questions or if you want to be signed up for beta testing and everything. Yes, um, this is kind of uh, end the slide. So uh, housing roots as all. Um, housing connects us to the place, uh, connects us to each other and connects us to our urban systems. So yeah, we... Uh, uh, believe that housing is a uh, root for all of us, uh, is a place where we feel comfortable and it should be affordable for everyone. Yes, uh, so this is the first part of my presentation. So uh, please uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, mostly uh, questions or comments are encouraged. Uh, please go ahead and ask if anyone has any. Uh, Rajit, we'll probably do combined question and answers at the end. Yeah, uh, but um, uh, this is like a separate topic. So, okay. if, uh, so if anyone has like any questions, so you're also welcome to ask at the end, but uh, if anyone have uh, any at, the, at this point of time. Okay. Yeah. So this is the first part of the presentation. And if anyone has any questions or comments, please go ahead. Hi, Rajit. Uh, thanks. The first part was really amazing. Uh, so uh, it is really interesting to see uh, the way you are incorporating the stakeholders in all your, uh, uh, I'll say, analysis or, or the assessment stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was more of interested to know uh, when you have uh, contradicting opinions from various stakeholders or when the opinions are conflicting, how do you uh, probably accommodate all of them? Because it's important to have compromised decision uh, it's it's not a way that you should make somebody more happy, but it's like make everybody less happy. That's okay. But you don't have to make one stakeholder a lot of happy, like something on those grounds. Uh, so you, you might want to take this right now or at the end. Uh, but yeah, that's something I would really want to know. Yeah, I, I can uh, address this now. Yeah, uh, it's a very good question. So yeah, uh, we do uh, get like uh, many uh, uh, of these uh, asking for different types of opinions from different stakeholders. So uh, we will uh, take uh, everyone's uh, question and uh, everyone's opinion into consideration. So we'll be having a team meeting uh, based on uh, uh, the questions and everything. So we'll try to uh, analyze uh, if that is like possible and if it is uh, related or uh, able to uh, include uh, in our assessment mm -hmm. and uh, show it in our final end product. And also we mostly uh, give a preference to uh, Oklahoma Finance, uh, Housing Finance Agency because they're like uh, funding our projects and they have like particular uh, requirements of outcomes from us. So we will be mostly focusing on uh, their outcomes and uh, we will uh, definitely include uh, if uh, any of the stakeholders want any options uh, to be included that are like doable in our timeline and uh, that is uh, important to our project yeah, yeah. that's Thanks. a good question. yeah that, that was really question. insightful uh, thank you i also have a small question uh, is there like from your analysis do you have an idea of what is a equitable percentage of for-profit housing to uh, affordable housing 
like from bigger metropolitan cities is there anything any any trend that you see where it like previously it was x percentage now it's this or something to that which helps you in making decisions i guess is what i so yeah uh, that's a very good question so uh, yeah currently we are uh, in the analysis stage and we identified um, some uh, on the county level uh, and we are currently working on the metro and micropolitan levels so yeah we uh, uh, obviously have uh, some questions about like oklahoma county that's where oklahoma city is there and uh, that is uh, complete different uh, situation from uh, the other counties. Uh, the, uh, the situation is different and uh, the affordability is kind of uh, very less in um, some of the Payne County and Oklahoma County and everything. So uh, we are currently in the analysis stage and uh, we are trying to uh, find exactly what you're asking about, like uh, the trend from the past and how uh, it, it is going to be in the future. We're also working on the projections uh, that might uh, help uh, some of the developers uh, uh, in getting the idea of uh, uh, what might happen next. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Roshan. So... Um, yeah. Just a reminder, everyone, this is the first part of Rajit's presentation. Mm -hmm. And if there are any other questions for the first part, it's highly encouraged. <clears throat> Otherwise, okay. uh, Rajit, you can uh, proceed with the second part. Be before uh, before he before before you do, Rajiv, I uh, I don't have a question. Uh, uh, Rajiv is probably sick of all of my questions mm -hmm. by now, uh, but I I just want to. Um, you know, commend him. Uh, he's been a very, you know, uh, uh, you know, great addition to our development team. He's he's uh, he always uh, is very curious. He's 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 always willing to explore different options. Um, and you know, I I just want to uh, you know thank him for his work here. You know. Uh, uh, it's been, you know, great to get to know him, and and his work is meaningful, as I'm sure all of your, your you, you know, the work that you guys are doing. So uh, that's my two cents. Thanks. Thank you. Fun. Yeah, thank you uh, very much, Sean, for your comments. Yeah, I'm I'm trying my best uh, to get uh, uh, involved in most of the things and trying to uh, address uh, uh, particular things in creative way. Yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, um, yeah. Same. May I may I a quick question? Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering um, the way in which you have presented it, uh, like it as very uh, customized and specific to a particular region, like Oklahoma, right? Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how can you know because Canada also has a very severe uh, housing problem. You know, it's it's right now extremely serious. Like people cannot afford. So. I was wondering what prevented you or what prevents you from making a generic platform which can be applicable to any place like um, and then apply it to a particular region rather than you know you have gone the other way around like you're starting with Oklahoma and then you may explore generic uh, platform but what actually um, restricted you to be very customized you know sort of bottom up approach instead of top down approach yeah. thank you yeah, uh, thank you very much for your question. Yeah, uh, that, that's what I was wondering uh, about earlier too. But uh, uh, th this is like uh, a project that is like given to us by uh, Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency uh, in order to like work on the housing needs assessment uh, in the Oklahoma state alone. And uh, uh, they uh, they have like a particular requirements and uh, they wanted us to like create an assessment that would help uh, them uh, give uh, particular tax credits to uh, particular projects uh, for like developers and everything. And while giving the tax credits, there are like uh, many things they take into consideration and everything. So using this assessment, you can uh, uh, you clearly see where uh, the housing need is, where the housing demand is. Uh, by looking into that, uh, they can uh, clearly uh, 
uh, go with the decision based on the uh, clear uh, assessment and analysis from this tool. So that's where we're focusing on. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, uh, Canada, uh, the, their housing uh, crisis is kind of crazy there. And also I recently heard about the uh, New York uh, Airbnb rules. Uh, they're kind of uh, tricky and they're trying to uh, address the housing affordability in uh, different ways and everything. Yeah, Airbnb is also kind of a problem and each of the state and each of the city uh, are trying to address uh, this housing situation in different ways. So uh, coming to our state, uh, we are just uh, trying to uh, help uh, uh, make informed decisions uh, using our tool uh, and everything. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much for your question. Yeah, I hope this addresses this. Thanks. Thanks for the question, Professor. Um, yeah. Anyone see. else yeah. has any questions? Um, yeah. I think mm -hmm. we can go forward. Sure, with yeah, please, please go ahead. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is my uh, second part of the presentation. Uh, this is named as Sustainable uh, low impact development methods. Um, low impact development is short for like uh, LID. So uh, before going into uh, all the details, I'll give uh, uh, like a brief introduction of what uh, landscape architecture is, uh, what kind of things we do on. So yeah. So uh, uh, many of you are recognize this park. This is like a uh, Cesartel Park in OKC. Um, this is one of the very big parks in the downtown Oklahoma City. It, uh, it plays a major role uh, in uh, many events and all the parks and yeah, whatnot. Um, this is the Myriad Gardens. Uh, this is also uh, inside Oklahoma downtown. And uh, this is uh, very good for like evening walks and they have like many things to explore and everything. Um, this is uh, the gathering place in Tulsa. Uh, you should definitely uh, visit this park. This is like very, very big park. It has like numerous and numerous activities, events and everything. So this is uh, designed very well. Um, uh, and uh, this is uh, very good in terms of uh, designing and uh, implementation. So uh, this is uh, Clyde Warren Park in Dallas. Uh, this is also awesome. Uh, you can see clearly all the design and people enjoying the park. So uh, what we see uh, common in all of these uh, projects is that um, these are all designed by landscape architects. Uh, many of the landscape architects are involved uh, in designing this and planning this, the whole project and working on the design and everything. So uh, you can see there are like many firms uh, uh, that uh, worked on different kind of projects. So all these are like landscape architecture firms and sorry, uh, landscape architecture firms and uh, uh, some of the these projects are like uh, award winning projects um, uh, in uh, many different competitions uh, in in uh, country level. So uh, all these are like pretty good projects. So all I wanted to say is like uh, landscape architects uh, work on uh, these kind of projects. Yeah. So basically uh landscape architects create uh, outdoor spaces like parks uh, city squares to provide uh, that provide opportunity to connect interact uh, with their community uh, we listen to community members and uh, ensure every voice is heard and we use those uh, things in, in you know expertise to design resilient public spaces that are accessible to people of all ages incomes and abilities so um, ours is like a recently designated as a STEM program. So um, yeah, STEM program might not be uh, 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 much, uh, it doesn't make much different to a lot of people, but it does make a difference to international students because STEM program uh, gives like three years of uh, working opportunity after uh, your graduation. So uh, coming to uh, low impact development, uh, we, uh, we can start with the stormwater. So um, yeah, uh, coming to uh, the stormwater, uh, how do we like uh, define the stormwater? 
uh, storm water is uh, like the water that is like originated uh, uh, during the precipitation events like snow, ice melt or like uh, rain or something. So all these uh, water like uh, can soak in the soil, uh, can be held on the surface, evaporate or runoff, end up in nearby streams, rivers and water bodies. So that is basically the storm water. So you can clearly see the hydrologic uh, cycle here. Um, there are uh, different types of uh, uh, forms of water. Uh, uh, like uh, it is basically a cycle uh, which continuously runs on a loop. So after present uh, precipitation, it can some of the water is run off and some of is stored. Some of uh, is like uh, evapor trans uh, trans transpiration, evaporation, and everything. So some of them is uh, percolated and everything. So storm water uh, can also create uh, many problems. Uh, uh, one of the problem is like flooding uh, in some of the regions and everything. And also it also has like uh, quality storm water quality issues, which might be um, uh, difficult for uh, aquatic life and everything. Yeah. So stormwater quality and quality basics. So uh, looking into the quality wise, so uh, stormwater quality, uh, it's not like um, drinking water. So pollutants such as like um, uh, some of the metals, oil, grease and uh, fecal coliform, uh, uh, they, they uh, pollute uh, the quality of the stormwater and quantity, uh, it's like flood control. So uh, if we don't take uh, the runoff water into uh, consideration, uh, it might cause into flooding. Uh, we should take uh, total runoff volume and also uh, peak discharge rate uh, in terms of quantity. See, we can see um, uh, the runoff quality uh, is particularly like this on most of the cities uh, uh, in uh, US and some part of the world. Um, yes, uh, here we're looking into impact of urbanization on environment. So uh, by uh, polluting uh, in terms of uh, stormwater, uh, there is like a loss of uh, wildlife habitat. Uh, there is only limited uh, clean drinking water. Uh, it also lowers uh, groundwater table increased uh, steam water uh, temperature, uh, which is a problem for aquatic life and everything. Yeah, you can see uh, many impacts, uh, adverse impacts uh, on the environment. So uh, on the left, uh, we can see uh, here, uh, this is like uh, the general undisturbed uh, nature, how it works. So uh, most 40% is like evaporate transpirator and 10% runoff and 20% is like uh, infiltrated and uh, shallow infiltration. So this is like the natural uh, ground cover. Um, now taking um, the urban uh, areas into consideration, uh, we can see uh, most of the urban uh, areas are covered with impervious uh, covers, mostly housing, sidewalks, roads, and all these things, buildings. So uh, all this uh, uh, natural uh, thing uh, is uh, cycle is disturbed. Like you can see the percentage is 55% of runoff. Uh, if it is like uh, not controlled properly, uh, it leads to flooding and everything. In some of the areas, the infiltration is like pretty less. Uh, that's where, uh, where uh, groundwater table uh, is like very down in particular cities and everything. So these are the groundwater impact. So uh, how do we uh, address uh, these kinds of uh, issues? So uh, we have like uh, mitigation strategies, uh, especially uh, low impact development. Um, uh, they have like uh, different uh, uh, development strategies. Um, I'll go to uh, them uh, in the later slides. So uh, sustainable development planning oriented, uh, it can be addressed in larger scale and uh, all these low impact, uh, low impact development, they can be uh, addressed in the local scale. Yeah, what is uh, low impact development? So uh, LID is a, a sustainable uh, land development approach to uh, describe uh, a land planning and engineering uh, design approach to manage stormwater runoff and also quality. Uh, it, it emphasizes uh, conservation uh, on-site natural features to protect water quality also. 
So why do we need a uh, LID? So um, yeah, so as we discussed earlier, uh, we can uh, see uh, the problem with the infiltration. So most of the cities are covered with the impervious surfaces where water cannot like go into uh, the ground uh, uh, as it is used to be in the earlier ground cover. So uh, we need LID for like many reasons. Uh, it, the main benefits are like water quality, uh, costly flooding events, uh, and habitat recharge and uh, neighborhood beauty. Yeah. So uh, it also has uh, uh, helps in mitigating the urban heat island, climate change, energy, air pollution, property values too. So yeah, uh, the benefits of LID uh, is that it can be uh, applied at like uh, any stage. It can be applied at uh, undeveloped stage and the developed stage. It can be uh, incorporated in early planning stages and also uh, it can be done after uh, construction of uh, some of the housing. So uh, uh, I'll quickly uh, go with the uh, LID design principles. So uh, th these are like uh, some of the principles I'll be talking about uh, that are some of the methods we use in order to uh, address uh, these issues. So first one is like the preservation. So while site planning, uh, you don't have to like uh, remove the whole uh, existing woodlands and everything. Uh, are you taking uh, existing woodlands into consideration, preserving them and uh, uh, designing accordingly uh, will help a lot uh, with all these development. Mm, Bioretention system. Uh, this is uh, like uh, uh, addressing the uh, runoff water uh, using plant soil bed and vegetation to filter runoff uh, uh, store runoff store in a uh, shallow depression. So rain gardens, uh, it, it can um, drain uh, fairly uh, quickly uh, during the times of precipitation and uh, has uh, excellent uh, pollution removal ca uh, capabilities. Uh, vegetated soils. Uh, so all these uh, uh, principles are kind of similar, but not the same. Uh, each of them focus on different types of uh, output. So uh, it encourages infiltration and also uh, the main uh, uh, purpose of this vegetative wheel uh, is to like infiltration of low flow and frequent storm events. It can be implemented uh, along residential streets and highways permeable paving. So this is kind of a creative solution. So we can see uh, most of the parking lots, they're like asphalt and uh, uh, cement uh, or concrete or something. So using impervious uh, paving material, uh, the water cannot like percolate into uh, the ground. So using uh, new technology like uh, permeable paving, uh, where it kind of serves its functional purpose. And also uh, it is helpful uh, in terms of infiltrating into the ground. So yeah, we can use, uh, we have new technology like pervious concrete, pervious asphalt, pervious uh, paving stones and uh, grass pavers. Yeah, you can see some of the examples here, how they address uh, the issues uh, creatively. Uh, green roofs, uh, this also has uh, many uh, different advantages and everything. So um, storm, storm water runoff and uh, air purification, recre uh, recreational amenities. Yeah, uh, each of them have like uh, additional benefits uh, implementing uh, these uh, principles into our design. So uh, in most of the uh, construction, uh, the soil is like uh, disturbed. So adding compost to the soil uh, in order to um, restore the soil's health uh, is also very helpful. Uh, vegetator filter strips. Uh, this is kind of similar to the previous, but uh, the purpose is kind of like dif different here. So here we can see uh, it removes the particulates and runoff water is slowed down and uh, the deposition of com contaminants is also reduced. So here we can see uh, the vegetative strips are like uh, along the stream. So what it does is uh, uh, when the precipitation happens, uh, these vegetative strips, they uh, slow down the runoff rate. Uh, runoff rate is uh, uh, 
basically uh, we can say the speed of uh, water flowing uh, on the surface. So uh, it slows down the speed and also it filters some of the uh, pollutants uh, that are uh, being added to the rivers and also uh, streams. So uh, those are all the basic uh, um, uh, low impact development methods uh, that are uh, uh, principles uh, used in addressing the stormwater, uh, stormwater uh, flooding issues and also quality issues. Yeah, stormwater runoff and also quality issues. So uh, I can uh, quickly go on some of my design projects. So uh, in, in my design projects, uh, uh, this is one of the projects uh, I worked on one of the previous semesters. So I got a uh, honor award uh, in the Oklahoma chapter uh, of uh, landscape architects uh, uh, for my project in creative approach to the design. So uh, I will quickly uh, uh, go through this project of mine. I will, uh, this project is like very big and very long. I'll mostly focus on only the low impact development methods and uh, some of the uh, features I use to address uh, stormwater flooding and quality. So um, yeah, coming to uh, the project, uh, this is like the Andrews Park. Uh, you all know, uh, maybe some of you know, like the Andrews Park, it is one of the major park uh, in the uh, Norman downtown. Uh, it is, uh, um, you can see here the map. So uh, the center one, uh, this is the project site. Uh, currently it has like stormwater quality and uh, flooding issues uh, during uh, some of the times of the year. Um, uh, it is surrounded with, um, uh, the yellow is uh, the residential areas. Uh, the red is the commercial areas and um, uh, the blue is institutional. So uh, on the north side, we have like the normal public library on the south side, we have a uh, city of uh, Norman uh, staff uh, working uh, here. So this is like uh, the site context. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is some of the analysis uh, uh, you can see here. So in the left, uh, you can clearly see uh, the site topography control lines. Uh, the blue ones are like the lowest uh, contour lines. That's where uh, the uh, the water from the whole side uh, is flowing towards this direction and stored here. So on the right, you can see um, flood hazard zone. So um, if, if there is like a heavy precipitation over a particular time of, uh, uh, over a particular amount of time, uh, there is a possibility of flooding uh, in this area. You can see really clearly see the hatch here. So um, there is a problem of flooding uh, here in the park. So I address uh, uh, this park in uh, some of the creative ways. Uh, this is the planting design I did. Uh, it doesn't show much uh, details about uh, the design part, but it is mostly for the planting part. So um, yeah, I use some of the uh, planting methods uh, that are like in the detention pond that uh, help uh, control uh, the detention pond. And some of them are used in the pollinator garden to uh, take uh, the environmental uh, uh, environment into consideration. So uh, zooming on to the detention pond. So this is the detention pond. You can clearly see here the, the det detention pond. These are all the perspectives of the detention pond. So this is the section line uh, of the pond. And here you can see. So um, uh, zooming into uh, some of the sections here. So uh, here is like uh, the walking track that is surrounded uh, around the detention pond. And uh, you can see the water outlet when the pond is overflowed uh, with the water. It is uh, kind of like a water, uh, water outlet, which uh, allows the water to flow uh, and connect into the drain. And um, there is like a, also water fountain, uh, which uh, works in uh, some parts of the time. So uh, coming into uh, technical details, so 
uh, in the left, you can see uh, stormwater calculations. So uh, you can see uh, the uh, storage of volume uh, that is required for the entire site in order to uh, hold the water when it is like a two year flood or like 10 year flood and 100 year flood. So um, what are like two year, 10 year, 100 year flood? It is like, uh, it is a possibility that uh, in the 10 years, uh, there might be uh, a precipitation, uh, a, a precipitation amount of water that uh, will be uh, having uh, uh, in the, in the site area. So, so uh, taking all these calculations into consideration, I kind of designed the park uh, into a hundred year plan. So uh, for like next hundred years, if there is like a flooding also, uh, the pond uh, will be taking care uh, in the site area. So you can clearly see here, uh, there are like um, three different stages. So uh, in the left, you can see the regular pond. That is how uh, like uh, the daily, uh, the park uh, pond works. You have like the walking structure uh, all around the park and you have the fountain working and also it is surrounded with all the vegetation. But if you have like the 10 year flooding, so uh, all the uh, walking is like submerged into the uh, water and you cannot access uh, uh, the inner circle of the walkway. So uh, the, you can only uh, access the out outer uh, walkway, but not the inside. But if you have like the heavy flooding at the 100 year storm, um, you can only access uh, outside uh, or, or some of the plants might be uh, submerged. Uh, that is the reason uh, I, I took some of the plant material into consideration where they can sustain uh, for some of the time, even if the water uh, is flooded uh, in particular time. This is completely different project. So um, th this is a uh, city of Perkins. Um, I use uh, some of my uh, low impact development tools for um, addressing some of the water flooding and quality issues. So you can uh, clearly see here the whole strip of city of Perkins. So I kind of divided uh, it into uh, three parts. Um, here, uh, this, this is the highway district part. Main, uh, Main Street District Park and Riverside District. So uh, each of the district has like uh, different types of uh, site and uh, different types of problem that can be addressed uh, using different types of uh, low impact development methods. So uh, here at the highway junction, I propose like a uh, bioretention pond. Um, it kind of has um, uh, highway district, it, ha it has like, it addresses uh, stormwater runoff and improves water quality and the flooding issues. So uh, yeah, we have uh, permeable paving and vegetative swales and everything. So uh, Main Street District, so I approached in a way different way because uh, Main Street has like uh, many commercial buildings and everything. So I took uh, the placemaking into consideration and uh, designed uh, the whole uh, parking lot into uh, a particular uh, uh, low impact development method. So I approach in a particular clear way. Uh, that's where uh, it addresses many of the issues uh, in, in uh, Main Street area. So yeah, in, in coming to the riverside, uh, we have like uh, riparian buffers, uh, which also, um, addresses the uh, erosion uh, of the riverside and everything. So uh, to be brief, uh, we can clearly uh, see here, uh, see here uh, the positive characteristics and everything, spacious roads and potential riverside development. That's where uh, my placemaking uh, opportunity uh, opened up and also potential uh, riverfront where uh, I have opportunity to uh, implement uh, riparian buffers. So negative uh, characteristics are like flooding issues and um, soil erosion and uh, polluting the river. So I used uh, different types of methods in addressing uh, all these issues. So yeah, um, this is one of the project uh, I worked in the previous semesters and 
uh, using all these low impact developments. So yeah, uh, I think this concludes my second part of my presentation. Um, any doubts or questions are encouraged and please go ahead. Thank you so much, Rajiv, uh, for the presentation. Mm -hmm. I would encourage from audience, uh, if they have any questions or comments, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, great presentation and great insights in terms of how uh, everything is done. I mean, there are certain things that we have always read as part of our environmental studies in our school, but having seen them implemented, like this uh, it's really amazing and it shows how much thought you have put into every problem that you have tackled uh i i probably just have one question mm. uh i think clean water or just water in general that is portable that could be used for cleaning as well is is a problem um is there a is there any way where there is a mandate for uh, architecture of the houses in a way where they have their own stormwater collection system where the the house in itself is sustainable and in case if the city needs then there is uh, they can collect it from the people and in in a way like how electricity is given back into the grid by people who have solar and then they get paid for providing more electricity is there something like that in architecture space where there's a solution where people collect water and city benefits from people's individual collection rather than the city having to plan for a bigger area and then there's more dedicated space that will be utilized for the project rather than for housing let's say yeah uh, that is a very uh, good question and uh, yeah it, it's it's a very creative question so uh, ad uh, addressing that question so we have a uh, rainwater harvesting method that is also one of the low impact development method so uh, back in india so uh, um, we we used to have like a particular rule that uh, if you have like a particular amount of um, um, coverage of uh, area in the land. So you should be having uh, this much capacity of uh, rainwater harvesting pit that is mandated for each house and individual uh, when they're developing and uh, applying for uh, building permits and everything. Uh, but uh, coming to uh, here, um, that is kind of uh, uh, approach I'm looking into, but uh, it's mostly uh, connected to uh, policy and everything. Right. Uh, it, it requires many, uh, mo most of the work. By doing that, uh, uh, the water table uh, is like increased and groundwater is increased and they have like uh, many good benefits but uh, as you said uh, connecting like a central grid system uh, collecting all the uh, storm water and uh, using uh, it for other purposes that is like a very creative way but uh, that requires uh, many uh, uh, much larger scale uh, planning and also approach uh, in terms of like implementation and uh, working on the policy level uh, it, it is a very good idea, but uh, yeah, we, we should be like working on um, some of the thing, uh, uh, something like this where uh, homeowners are like, uh, people should benefit from stormwater. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Roshan. Yeah. Anyone else has questions? Yeah. <clears throat> I have just a comment. Um, oh. Basically, in continuation to the rainwater harvest uh, uh, philosophy, which um, I, I uh, come from Bangalore, where it is mandatory to, um, you know, as uh, Rajit has told, a particular roof area, uh, it is about that. Then uh, there are severe penalties if you don't do rainwater harvesting. So at least uh, one option is that uh, large industrial warehouses and that sort of stuff where the roof area is very uh, big, uh, if they can be uh, harvested and uh, not reused immediately, but it can just uh, increase the water level, table level. So 
just uh, make a pit and it, it doesn't cost much. Like just you need a JCB, make a pit and <laughs> make some sort of um, 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 wall structure and uh, the water goes there and it absorbs, right? So that helps in reducing rainwater. Uh, that's a very valid question and a valid idea. Like uh, maybe reusing may be a little bit difficult. It's, it can be the next stage, but at least to begin with, it can be uh, used to absorb in a pit. So that can be looked into. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a really uh, 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 nice way to approach the rainwater and everything. Um, I appreciate it for your comments and uh, yeah. Um, like if you have like a uh, heavy uh, precipitation and everything, yeah, reuse can be like possible. So currently uh, the Norman, uh, city of Norman, they use the water from uh, Lake Thunderbird. So uh, maybe we can like uh, create a pit that is like large enough for the city uh, and purify that water and uh, um, um, send back to the people. Yeah, it, it can be done, but it, it, it can be, uh, addressed only in the larger scale planning and um, many of the policy changes and um, so much infrastructure is uh, needed. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the comment, Professor. Um, anyone else has any questions or comments? Um, if not, um, Rajat, I had, I had a question of uh, implementation, okay. like Suppose if you if the I know designing takes time and mm -hmm. thought, uh, how much time will it take to implement? Like generally, if if you are doing a project, like how much time it will take to implement all the project to complete the project, basically. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, it 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 uh, depends on project to project, and also it depends on like what principle are you working on on, and also it depends on uh what output are you looking for so if you're like trying to address the quality uh we can use uh some of the address like uh plant materials for example we can use rain uh rain uh, gardens uh uh to filter all the pollutants vegetative strips all our your uh house and uh trying to um uh make less impact of pollutions from your uh, uh household uh, coming to uh, if you are trying to address the flooding issues, mm -hmm. so uh, you you can do uh, the similar thing with the retention or detention pond within like a small scale. It depends on like uh, how much area your house is mm -hmm. and how much area are uh, you willing to uh, dedicate it to a pond or like a rain garden or like vegetative strips. So um, if you want to um, do your part, uh, like reducing your personal runoff water uh, into uh, uh, the main um, stormwater lines. Uh, and also um, it depends if you have the budget for a permeable pavement. So it's kind of like uh, uh, what your interests are and depends uh, yeah. on design to design. So yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Um, anyone else has question or comments? Um, Farooq, uh, do you have any comments on the presentation? Thank you. What we've seen today is something extremely interesting in terms of strategic planning and how this planning uh, can affect uh, the lives of people and the happiness of people. So it's not just making money uh, or a company making money as we do in engineering, where we build project, uh, we build systems and uh, things that we sell so that a company makes money and the stockholders make money. This is, an, is a social investment in the improvement of the quality of life of people living in a community. And the interesting part here is to make this happen, technology has to be involved. For example, for the fountains to work, there has to be technology. For example, to the fans to work, it has to be smart technology to turn something on and turn something off. And if it rains, the 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 fountains don't work. So we have, a, as as engineers, we have a lot of we have a good role to play in terms of infusing technology and what happens. For example, uh, uh, I see a lot of green space. Now, if there's a lot of green space, what it means is that has to be water. 
But when do you water it? Uh, how much water do you use for that? So, for example, you can have a sensor from the ground that says, oh, yeah, the, this, is, this is the amount of nutrient that is needed to figure out how big the grass should be so that you can mow it at this time or that time and things like that. So I think this is a, there's a glorious opportunity for people who are interested in green technology and for, for improving the, the urban spaces uh, uh, to introduce smart technology to make this happen. So in that sense, I'm very enthused by what uh, Rajit has uh, presented and what his mentor has been working on. Yeah. Thank you so much for the comment. Uh, with that being said, uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today's presentation. And um, I really appreciate all of the members who have 